Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how easy it is to remove the Meguiar's headlight coating spray because I made a mistake. Yes, I'm only human still. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. Okay, so as the title suggests, and as I said earlier, I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove this Meguiar's headlight coating, which is not the case with many, many other uh, sealants or coatings, UV coatings or un-UV coatings. But see here, I made a common mistake that happens a lot uh, when you're a rookie or even when you're a pro. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot when you're a pro. I mean, the last time I've done this is, you know, maybe once, you know, maybe twice a year. Um, just overshooting. Uh, what I ten generally try to do is uh, do a, a more thicker coat there at the top where this is prone to go bad. And I just got a little carried away sometimes. And you just got to know when to stop it. Even if you know when to stop, sometimes things happen when you're dealing with uh, transition from summer to winter or fall. Uh, you know, seconds can mean a lot. Um, you know, a couple uh, seconds and a couple degrees mean a lot when you're spraying the coating, especially when you're doing a heavy coat instead of two coats, uh, which is preferable. Um, if you want to learn more about that, watch this video here. It's uh, why not to double coat. It's uh, up on my channel right now as well. But anyways, let's get down to business. This is a um, P500. And it sucks because this light was perfect except for that. And this is a MDX. Um, Acura MDX. The light was perfect before I noticed the drip. And uh, what you want to do pretty much is let it fully um, dry. And you see how quick this dries? This is only um, maybe 15, 20 minutes later. Uh, luckily, this was the first light I started on. The second light came out perfect. I did the second light and then I doubled back because this would, would have uh, been long dry by the time I finished the second light, which took about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so I doubled back once I finished that light and that light, uh, you know, started to dry or whatever. I doubled back to hit this and wanted to film it. Um, but yeah, as you see, um, this stuff comes off pretty easy. Um, and it's not just because it's fresh. It hasn't fully cured. It takes about, uh, about 16 hours in 80 degree heat. This is um, not summer. Uh, the day probably didn't even hit 80 degree. I think the max was like close to 70. This was the beginning of fall. Um, but yeah, so it comes off really easy. One P500, one uh, P800, and one, you know, P3000, and pretty much, uh, you know, start from scratch. And that's the best way to do this, by the way. Um, you don't want to try and fix it and spot fix it. I've tried many times on vehicles just to see what happens because what's the worst going to happen? You're just going to have to take it all down again, right? So this is a good thing that you can actually practice in motion and actually practice in a live situation. But nevertheless, there is nothing on God's green earth or this earth we walk on or earth that you know that you can do to these headlights, that you can apply to these headlights, that you can coat to these headlights, that you can uh, wrap these headlights. There's nothing you can do to make this a permanent headlight restoration. So anybody, anytime you see one of those guys on, on um, you know, on the Internet or on YouTube talking about, hey, this is permanent headlight restoration. Let me show you how to do permanent headlight restoration. Or if you have a business that says, yeah, we, we offer permanent headlight restoration and we, you know, we'll give, you know, you know, whatever, we'll give these warranties out and all this crazy stuff. They're just pulling your chain because you don't know that, you know, there's no such thing as a permanent headlight restoration. Nothing on this vehicle expressly or any vehicle expressly on the outside of the vehicle or motorized parts is permanent. All right, enough about that. Getting into some extensive hand sanding here with the P800. This is a very important part um, when you are removing the uh, clear coat just because it's, um, it's more finesse here. Uh, you know, you're pretty much doing the same stuff as any other light, but you're doing it much lighter. You're just removing 
the uh, clear coat that is fresh, you know, and reapplying. So all the work has already been done. You're just removing that uh, UV clear coat, and that's what you're doing here. You're, you know, it's already gone now. It's about 99% gone. So right here, we're just feather, you know, really light, smooth, uh, you know, smooth, soft touch to remove the other 1%. And uh, the way you can gauge that is you can kind of see it, you know. You'll start touching the actual headlight in this spot and that spot, and then you know that overall, you know, that you're close to uh, having most of it off, and then you stop short and just kind of do the rest with the hand sanding and the P800. Starting off here with some water and a P3000. As you kind of see, this is going, I am fast forwarding and stuff, but I am uh, getting through this a lot faster than the actual headlight restoration because uh, you don't have to worry about removing the original coating or the damage or any of that stuff. It's already been done. It's way quicker, it's way easier on this. Uh, with this, I'm slowing down a little bit because I have to instruct and show um, what's going on with this. But I mean, if it was, you know, not on the camera or whatever, I could probably do it like in 10 minutes, 8 minutes, something like that. Uh, you know, to break it down and then reshoot it again with the clear coat. But, you know, I'm slowing down a little bit here and just trying to, um, you know, elaborate and show you guys what's going on. Plus, I have this camera right here in between my legs. So... It's a little different or wherever this is at any given time. So um, what you guys normally see on the video is my uh, snail's pace slow down. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm out there rocking and rolling, there's no camera in the way, and I'm not filming, and there's you know the right conditions. It's 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 about half the time that what you guys see, or about two thirds of the time of what you guys see. And on another note, the P3000s uh, are the most expensive pads, but they are probably the most important pad um, to really get rid of those fine scratches. They're pretty much a slash sanding slash polishing type pad. Uh, they're designed to erase those scratches and those fine scratches uh, left behind by the 800 and the 500, whatever you used before that point. Um, but do keep in mind that, you know, they are more expensive than the other ones by far, but they're the only one that you can technically use multiple times. The one I'm using here has been used probably in about five other headlight restorations. So, I mean, you know, you get, you don't just use one for each time. You know, you can use it multiple times. It is good. All right, so hitting in here with the Windex, make sure it's all clean, inspecting as I'm, uh, you know, while it's wet for any kind of defects, scratching or chipping, any kind of lines, anything weird at this point, you can see them uh, before you get to the next step or before you shoot them, you want to take care of them. And uh, you see how it's dehydrating now? Once it dehydrates, they're harder to see. But if you see anything that should be taken care of at this point, that's when you want to take care of it before you proceed on. And you see how foggy this is? Now, just imagine there's people out there that are doing headlight, headlight restoration. I know you've seen them, and they shoot it from here. They spray it from this point. So imagine, even though it turns clear, maybe not as clear as mine, but even though it turns clear, imagine the difference of night vision, per se. Now, it's scientific as well, but I'm not trying to get too scientific with it. But see how porous that is and whatever? That's just stuff that's not filled in. That's just open stuff. When they fill it in with the sealer, you know, it just uh, it's not going to perform as well with the night vision or the photo transparency. Believe it or not, I've tried to do it this way. And uh, I do certain scientific tests. I have meters and light meters and stuff like that. They do not work and function as well at night with this. And they're not visually or optically clear at nighttime, meaning uh, with the light on, they don't look the same. They're not going to produce as much light as if you do this step. And now think about it. You can use common sense. Now, when you shoot it from that point that it was at, that foggy point, versus the point when I'm done uh, polishing right here, and just think about it. Which one is going to perform better? Which one's going to have more light expenditure? Just think about it. It's common sense. If you can see into that light that, you know, that good when this is done being polished, and if you can see, if you can't see into the light before this step and people are shooting it on that step, it's got to have some kind of negative effect, right? It's just common sense. I'm not trying to go into the scientific reason too bad about it. That's another video. But it's just common sense.
Now watch how this looks when I'm done doing it, when I'm done uh, polishing it. It's a lot more clear. It's a lot more, um, you know, transparent already. And people are like, it's not going to stick because, no, it sticks. I've never had a light peel. Um, you know, it's it sticks and it's designed for this. Going ahead and fast forward a little bit right here. 7800 RPM polishing um, for the most part on most parts of the light. And on this part, when you don't feel like you've done enough or you haven't had enough in one area, go ahead and reapply and you can do this, you know, as many times as you need to. Just make sure the light isn't overheating, which won't happen unless you're just reckless or you're actually trying to make it overheat. Always make sure you clean thoroughly. Um, you uh, you know clean thoroughly with the rag, but you don't want to use any kind of Windex, any kind of isopropyl alcohol. You want to leave a slight bit of this residue if you're using the right materials. That is something um, designed for headlights, designed for hard lens or plastic polish. You want to leave a little bit of the residue, not like globs or nothing like that. But after you wipe it off with a clean towel, um, whatever's there is microscopic, and you know you're not not going to know it's there or whatever, uh, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to extremely strip this because uh, this material has a certain amount of chemical and uh, oil hydration, okay, so being that it's dead and it was messed up and you just stripped the surface off, you have removed a lot of that oil resin base uh, that is inside of the polycarbonate okay you removed a lot of it okay it's dehydrated at this point so you just want to leave a little bit tad on and that's part of the uh, process um, of clarity that helps with the clarity now when you spray this over it locks a little bit of that in which is very helpful and it's very beneficial for your headlight health believe it or not um, if you want a, a, a explanation of porous here check this picture out here Gonna flash this real quick while I'm spraying this. That's porousness. Okay, that's the actual surface of the headlight. That's the actual surface of the polycarbonate headlight. That's what it looks like. Okay, not with the clear coat, but the actual material of the headlight. So, anyways, back to this. Spraying this. Check this out. Look at that. Coming out nice. Now it just has to dry. <laughs> and I made damn sure not to uh, do the same thing again. Sometimes, um, I mean, this is probably the second time this happened this year. It's very rare for me just because of my experience level and skill set level. Um, it's, it tends to happen sometimes um, if you've uh, been a little rough with your case or whatever, or, you know, you have cases in there. And I always check my tips first, but on this occasion, I didn't check my tip. You know, sometimes you get relaxed when your practices and um, my tip was a little loose when I started so I shot out a lot okay and I knew it was going to do this but there was no way around it I had to finish it up to see hopefully it would blend itself in because sometimes when it happens if you um let it sit it'll level itself out it's like a self-leveling mostly but uh the tip was loose it wasn't all the way in so when i hit the trigger it freaking shot out a lot of fluid right on that area when i started but check this out problem solved all right we took it all off put it back together and it is beautiful the way it's supposed to be Seeker six inch mini polisher Okay, very interested in this. Let's get this bad boy open. This is the Saker 6-inch mini polisher. Um, this is one of the deluxe packages. It comes with extra stuff and extra batteries. Um, this is the cordless polisher 6-inch, and it is a DA, which is, stands for dual action. And it's got a simple power switch, and it's got a pretty killer um, speed setting uh, all the way up to 6. 1 through 6 has two batteries. It's a 6-inch, and it comes with all this extra stuff here. Let's go ahead to get it open here goes all this cool stuff here it comes with a pretty decent uh, orange pads uh, this is the flat one here and it comes with another one in here um, 
comes with the apron. Uh, comes with a bunch of stuff here uh, for your purchase. Um, even comes here with a waffle cone pattern. Uh, and it also comes with some bonnets here, all six inch, different kind of bonnets. Uh, got a uh, P2000 sandpaper disc. If you wanted to use that, and uh, let me slow it down here. You got two high capacity batteries and we'll be explaining to you uh shortly what that means these batteries are amazing um they take a little long to charge but i'll show you why uh, it'll take about an hour a piece to charge which is not necessarily a downfall it's just that these batteries although they're small they pack a huge punch all right let's see what else we got here okay this is the actual device here look at this it's a beautiful package it's well designed it's well balanced um, uh, the, the sandpaper grip here, the uh, Velcro, feels very strong. I don't know if you can hear it sliding off my hand there. You can see the oblong uh, fit right there. That's because it's a DA, a dual action, which also um, the action spins and rotates at the same time, mimicking uh, the old school method of waxing a vehicle by hand. Uh, but, you know, times a million. <laughs> Not literally, but a lot. Uh, but anyways, uh, turn it on here. Listen to that sound. Look at that motion. Very nice. Now this uh, trigger here, this um, actual spindle here, is not a click spindle. It's more like uh, one of those lights that you can dim off and on. Right off the bat, this thing is very well balanced and it is very powerful. Alright, starting here with some Chemical Guys Wash Snow Foam. Uh, gonna go ahead and uh, wash the vehicle first, always before you wax or before you do anything else. Make sure you get a good scrub of that surface here with a mitt. Soap it up real good. And also dry the vehicle. Let the vehicle dry for a while before you start. Got the saker here and I'm um, getting ready to get started. Got a Hex Logic Chemical Guys pad here. Blue pad is one of my favorite ones that they make. Also got some blue Chemical Guys professional grade microfiber towels which are extra soft and the Butter Wet Wax by Chemical Guys also. Uh, it's a Carnuba wax. It's very good for dark color vehicles for any vehicle but I love to use it on uh, dark vehicles as a topper uh, being that my vehicle was already waxed about uh, three four months ago this is a good additive now check this out this is after the first panel I did look at that that is the mirror test is what I call that just like a mirror now this device did this this is very good steadily um, balanced device and it's uh, very strong look at the strength of it here just look at it but look how easy it is to use with one hand how small it is and it's, it's generally, I have uh, multiple devices. Uh, this is generally as strong as the big ones. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I've done this whole car with one battery. I was shocked. I thought, yeah, I'm going to have to do half this car. These little tiny batteries might work for half the car or a quarter of the car. But these batteries are extremely powerful. And it also gets sold in different uh, kits as well with more batteries and more stuff. Always wax your headlights. And this does a good job of them. This is what keeps your headlights going and keeps you from coming to a guy like me to fix your headlights for a long time. Also, uh, for performance in the rain, uh, wax your windows. And this is doing a good job of that. As you can see, look at that mirror finish this is the end result of one side ladies and gentlemen with that butter wet wax but primarily because this uh, device works extremely well um, I'm a big fan of it now look at this this is another finishing result and like I said one battery did this entire car and I still had some juice left in the battery uh, thanks for watching this is my review I give it five stars and this product is linked in the bio